to report that we have reached the 23rd of March 1940. This means Germany have uh, planned and uh, are about to e execute Operation Weser Übung, which I think means exercise Weser, and Weser is a river in Germany. Norway is a critical strategic point and would be an obvious point of attack for any enemy wanting to disrupt our steel trade with Sweden. We cannot risk our enemies setting up bases in this region. To obtain a good staging area for the invasion of Norway, we need to move on Denmark first. Mm -hmm. uh, and we get a small research bonus, 10% of transport models. Probably not that important. Now. What forces have we uh, planned and deployed to Scandinavia? First off for our invasion of Jylland here, we have uh, four different light divisions under General Manstein. Um, I figure there's mostly open terrain here. These are my worst mobile divisions. Small and meaningless and uh, they can easily get back to the main theater down here in France quickly. So they're, they're the mobile forces. Maybe I send one or two to Norway later on. I have seen pictures with uh, German infantry hiding behind Panzer I tanks uh, from Norway. So it, it would be historically correct to have some armored support in Norway. Not entire divisions though. Then we have, uh, what's it called, the Third Army under General Kesselring. He's a defensive general, defensive-minded, but experience is nice. And he's the one who's going to secure Denmark uh, with seven divisions and, uh, well, it's actually 126,000 infantry soldiers. So that's quite, quite an army, enough for Denmark. But will it be enough for Norway? We shall see. In Kiel, we have uh, assembled our entire mountain warfare troops. It's a core consisting of around 30,000 troops. Actually, it's more like 44,000 troops. And they have uh, prepared to land on this airfield here in, on Shelland next to Copenhagen. It's an invasion they are planning. Whereas our one uh, marine brigade, brigade or Seelandungsdivision, as it's also is called, it's actually just two regiments of uh, troops with no support, no artillery, nothing. It's just a very basic uni unit. But it's planned to take the port uh, of Od Odense, which I hope will make it easier for the infantry here of the 4th Army, or was it 3rd Army? Yeah, 3rd Army, to... Uh, fast come up and uh, fortify and consolidate in Copenhagen. Uh, are those straight, these blue? I think these those blow, blue lines are straight. So if there is no garrison here, which I, c I can't quite see, which, uh, I will land there. And finally we have the, uh, the first Fall Schir Mm, yeah, gear or Jäger, maybe a German word. S I've seen Jäger, but I do believe it's Jäger. Fallschirmjäger. Core. I'm fairly certain the Germans had a capital K and a notification, a, a slash here. So this is going to be the first Fallschirmjäger core. Now, here's something I want to try out. And I'll do it live. These guys are now at the green bar here over his organization, which is 43, which is very, very high in this mod, I believe. Usually you can reach 100 in, in vanilla, but they lowered uh, general org. So we have 43 here. I do believe when I ordered and prepared this operation, oh, here it says 80 transports. Th is that what I got or is that what is needed? Excuse me. I have 80 transports. I have 80 transports, which is probably 
well enough, but um, I would like to know how many I, I, I would need. Doesn't. Okay. Now it's only three divisions. In any case, did I remove? Oh, I hope I didn't remove the the operation order. In any case, their their general stud court student, which was the historical uh, paratrooper commander of Germany, he has some interesting uh, traits. His commando, which is out of supply, he's a skirmisher, which means he can attack without losing his entrenchment, but this is the most important one, airborne assault specialist. He has an extra paratrooper supply grace, 72 hours, which I think means that they will not start losing any supply. They will not use supplies for 72 hours, because they only bring a little tiny amount of supply with them. And also he has an ability called glider planes. And down here there's a paratroop parachute symbol which is called glider planes and it says commander power cost 4.6 base cost is 0 0.10 for each so for te 7 days paratrooper per plane 100% does that mean we need more paratroopers per plane? I think so Organization factor goes up with 200% and the air defense is increased by 50%. I don't know what a paratroopers and the air defense is. Is that from them being bombed by combat air support when after they landed? Or is it actually when they're inside the transport planes and they're very, very vulnerable in the transport planes because the, they are not good at uh, fighting other planes? I would hope it's the latter of these two. Paratrooper per plane, 100%. One would hope that since I'm ordering and kind of paying for glider planes here with command power, I would hope that you get get to put in more paratroopers into the same amount of transports. So it actually makes it easier for them to, to transport. But yes, green 100% usually means a, a positive benefit in Hearts of Iron. So I would, I would, I would think so. So... Well, I don't really get a... Yeah, it's the organization factor. That's why I show you, showed you f 43 as the organization. Are we going to get 200% bonus on top of that once we land, once we press this button? Or how it, does it work? 4.6, we have 18 command power. And now we order some glider planes for the first Falchion Jämberger Corps out of Kiel. Abili ability is already active. No change in organization, but it's active. And it has a duration for seven days. Uh, maybe when I uh, launch the operation. The operation we have insufficient naval superiority in the region or that is for that is probably for the marine because I, I, I was stupid and I uh, assigned the marines to the falchion series and now wow wait, wait, wait. yeah this might mess it up but we'll, we'll see we'll see once we declare war so two landings, one air, air drop, and then obviously around nine divisions or something like here, which is going to be plenty enough. I only see three divisions defending the border. Uh, and obviously I gathered a lot of, well, I am gathering a lot of, uh, I forgot, so they're coming now, but I've sent my, my uh, Stukas and my medium bombers up to the north. You'll see that happen in the next video, which will be the invasion itself. This is just a summary of the preparations. Um, obviously, I'm going to use naval forces for this. I think I managed to gather my uh, Kriegsmarine in the Hoxie Flotte. I have all my surface ships, ships um, except the new Scharnhorst and Gneisenau, which I haven't been able to train yet. <laughs> just because they... they um, went out to the Navy and didn't want to stay in the training Navy probably because I had like a uh, some sort of 
task force from start. So let's reset that one. So yeah, I wasn't aware that. But now I think we have, and I'm not going to use these new capital ships until fully trained, unless, unless I need to, but I, I don't think so. So they're going to stay in port, but our old navy here is going to support when it's necessary. I already sent up a small uh, scouting force called Mine Layers, which is nine destroyers, which have been laying 39 mines. Well, they re just recently started, but look at here outside the German coast, we have 609 mines placed. So, good luck invading the German coast. Also, my uh, coastal submarines are operating as not only their one fleet is patrolling, the next is convoy raiding. Well, they will be once Norway is in the war, and the third is kind of on reserve. Uh, I could have maybe I should use this Hawksea Flotte as something called Strike Force. This means it leaves ports and exits and enters combats going on. But obviously, I want to use them for sh uh, something called naval invasion support or shore bombardment later when I attack Norway. But right now we're focusing on Denmark, right? So available war goal, Denmark and Norway. Those popped up because I used that focus, attack Norway. Uh, but usually you have to prepare and justify war goal and uh, I've already done that. So Torvald Stowning for you you World War II buffs out there. Was he the social reformer, uh, prime minister of Denmark in 1940? I don't know. He's got a nice beard though. So, Denmark, we're gonna declare war on you and I, I can only choose conquer war gold. And it's gonna give me 3% uh, world tension. I'm not gonna call Slovakia. Conquer, on, declare, Denmark guest event, German invades. Ooh, so they get a special event, which might be a mod thingy that makes them surrender without resistance, which is historically what they happen. I'll tell you a great World War II joke, which is when when Germany uh, sent their ultimatum to Copenhagen, uh, the Prime Minister called up uh, the War Minister and said, oh, the Germans are coming, we need to defend, uh, mobilize the troops and the army and the uh, Minister of Defense or the uh, Chief of the Army or whoever said to the Prime Minister, yeah, sure, of course, do you want one artillery piece, one cannon, two cannons, or should we send all three? Yeah, that's not a great joke, but it's kind of a Danish World War II uh, story. There's actually a, uh, a war, Danish war movie about a bicycle machine gun I don't know, company or battalion that's uh, stationed down here on the f border and it's one of the few units that actually fought a few of the war forward reconnaissance, armored reconnaissance uh, German invading forces. Very briefly, very shortly, but Denmark actually fought just a little bit, like a, a small skirmish. They were basically overrun by German armored cars b at the border, these guys, but you know, they had they had a couple of uh, losses. So anyway, that's the plan of uh, invading uh, Denmark and Norway. No, I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but uh, that is the plan for um, Denmark. And we might uh, as well go through the invasion preparations for Western Europe while we are doing this summary video. We have the 1st Infantry Army, consisting of 15 infantry divisions with 270,000 soldiers up here towards the Dutch border. No, I guess the Belgian border. Uh, we have the... Well, b let's summarize that I have four armies with 15 infantry divisions in each, so I have 60 full-size, modern, fully trained uh, infantry divisions ready to fight in the West. That's a decent number, actually. I, uh, it's, not, it's not too much, but it's not too few either. Obviously, one of the armies, uh, the blue one on their model, is defending uh, in the south. 
So available for the actual offensive in the north is, is three of those armies. Under, uh, well, doesn't matter, but yeah. Also, of course, we have our two famous armor corps under Guderian and Rommel, ready to strike. I uh, had supply problems when I sent all these forces to Western Germany. So uh, a uh, supply issue popped up here. So apparently my roads and railway can't handle this massive army. Uh, so I'm suffering some attrition, but I hope it's not too much. I haven't looked into it exactly, but yellow means okay. Red is very bad. Yellow means okay. And as a, I require 159 supply, and it only supports 144. So it's not a huge marginal. What is it? 15 supply more is needed. So I'm just hoping there's not going to be too much uh, supply. Uh, too much attrition from uh, lack of supplies because I, I don't want to move these troops out now. They're, they're just gonna stand there my next Wait, can I declare war on When can I declare war on uh, The Netherlands and uh, Belgium maybe oh maybe I have to <laughs> justify on them manually sorry this is quite important. I have, might have made a huge, very big mistake here. Uh, Sweden, Norway, Norway, Finnish. Oh right, that's another thing. Uh, Finland and Soviet Union signed a white peace. Around the Maginot. Oh, this is the one I want. Conquer war on Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg. Okay, so 14 days, 14 days and 17 days. That is very bad because that's another month month and a half, uh, March, April, oh well, it's kind of historical then, but I'm gonna, okay, so I could then actually move this armored core out of this area, because why would I want to stand for a month and a half and just take um, attrition from low supply? So let's do that. My apologies. I I I thought, uh, yeah, I, I was mistaken how that worked. Wait. Supply. Yeah, I can stand in in Dortmund or Iserlohn, Dortmund, and I will be in another supply zone, which has uh, okay. Okay. So it, it, the invasion of France apparently is one and a half months away. Because manually um, justifying a war goal would take. How long would it take? Uh, conquer. I have to pick. Yeah, I, I don't remember this. Let's say I pick all these states, right? Uh, it would take. Oh, 23 days. So I, I could actually do it manually. Yeah, okay, let's go with the historical uh, focuses. It's fine. Right, yeah. Uh, other than that, my SS Corps is garrisoning Czechoslovakia along with the Slovak Corps, and they seem to be doing okay with that. But of course, what happened in Poland when that huge uh, garrison army left? Now all we have left is this green, I call it training army. Uh, obviously, it should be called something cool in German instead, but it's not. Um, so, not so not so hot. It's not doing so well. Uh, look at the resistance. It popped up from around, let's say, 10, 15 to around 25, 30, all over. And I decided to increase the, what's it called, garrison law, local police force. So I haven't gone up to secret police quite yet. I think I'm happy. So this is how I figure you use resistance these days. That you just 
take a gander an overview on like oh 27 am I good am I happy with that if you don't like it you send you increase the harshness of the occupation law or you send operatives to lower it or you just live with what it is because it's pretty soon it's gonna reach up to this maximum level and that's just the way what it is you can quite easily see that you get draft dodging and organized resistance whatever that means garrison penetration chance I have no idea what that means probably gives attrition to my garrisons but uh you know, I'll live with 25 to 230 uh, resistance for now. Um, the funny thing is, though, that now that Czechoslovakian resistance actually dropped, even though I uh, now uh, sent out a lot of uh, garrisons. I guess this might be full garrison force anyway. But the reason for that is that I have increased my compliance because I've had I had very lenient laws allowing the resistance to be quite high but now when when, con when um, they like me a little bit better the resistance is slowly going down so with time the Czechs gonna accept the annexation more and more and more not fully but one day I'll get most of the industry results from this area Poland of course is another matter this is interesting. If you if you watch here, resistance strength, you see I have three police stations giving minus ten in resistance growth. If I had twenty, would that nullify any resistance growth, no matter where they are they are built? Let's say I place twenty, that would that would be the same as the growth factor base value. Would that take away any resistance growth in the entire world? In that case, let's build twenty police stations. I have three now. Uh, here in uh, Czechoslovakia, so I'm, I'm gonna start building police stations in uh, Poland. And of course, you realize when I say build, meaning put in the construction queue, which is huge. Yeah, here I already have a lot of m police stations placed, because I am not building anything. I am only repairing UK bombing uh, losses. Yes, I know these go up by themselves slowly. But I've covered why I'm not doing that. Cause they're just gonna move away and bomb somewhere else, and my I, uh, industrial loss is just gonna increase and increase and increase. So, how is the air war going then? We might as well do a summary. It's been a couple of months since uh, my, the last update. Well, the UK, the Allies are losing 224 bombers and 125 fighters to my 84 loss. So. As you can see by the graph, well, the enemy bombers peaked out and they're still it's going down a bit, but my buildings bombed is going down. And I think they're basically, they're losing this air war. If they keep this up, they're gonna be out of bombers sooner or later. I guess I can see that they only operate 142 bombers over German now with 45 fighters, escorts, and uh, that is way less than when they started and I am up to 300 fighters we'll check the Luftwaffe so you know the situation I'm up to almost 1700 fighters it's gone up from 1400 by the by New Year's at 1940 so so my Luftwaffe is gaining strength rapidly and it seems uh, the Royal Air Force and the, I, I guess a lot of these are old French planes and old British planes so the air war is going well now for the game design perspective. So what this is typical Hearts of Iron stupid AI behavior. Like just sacrifice. They're gonna keep on doing this. Sending suicidally. It's been doing it in Hearts of Iron one. Like let's send our fleet straight into the Baltic day one. UK Navy, Royal Navy. And just suicidally attacking because scripting AR is hard. Now I don't know if the mod has changed the production numbers for, for UK, the allies, but as I said, I, I'm playing on normal, but I'm I'm ready to actually, oh, this is the AI. Nearby AI countries at war with the player receive a bonus, a bonus, all right, hard, desperate defense. You know, I didn't know how hard it's gonna be. I was hoping it was gonna be a hard mod, but it's not that hard yet, so let's let's give the AI a bit of whatever this is and whatever this is. Anyway, if I ever replay this, I gonna know 
the difficult level and uh, you know I probably put up the difficult level of Hearts of Iron with the allies the major allies anyway not very happy with how the AI performs here but I guess my uh, strategy of not building a lot of early crappy fighters actually paid off which obviously was my plan all, all along Let's let's go with that. Now I'm gonna be as surprised as you when I do this report because I haven't checked uh, naval losses in a long time. I just uh, let the submarines raid on uh, autopilot. Uh, older is older all our losses. I don't know current year. Don't ask him, but current year. Maybe I have to add 19 to with two submarines. That makes sense. I, I only think I've seen two submarines sunk since uh, I, lo I saw last year 19. So we haven't lost that many. Wait, here we lost another three and here we lost... Jesus! Okay, why can't I see how many submarines I lost in total without having to m add them? It's just... You can't. I know I lost 50 ships. Well, oh, that includes transports. So I have to do a guesstimate that I lost maybe 25, 30 submarines and the same amount of transports. But I don't know because then I have to add these ledgers manually. 19, 21, 24, 26. Okay, good. Well, you want to do that every time, right? I mean, there's no way you want to check how many submarines have I lost totally. It's 26. Anyway, let's multiply 26 with the number of transports lost. Well, or lost ships. I'm not going to do the same, but because most are coastal submarines and 95% are transports. But anyway, I think I'm doing good because I need a multiplier of 4 and some to break even IC production cost. And here I have quite a lot more than that. Almost twice. So whether it's because I'm still sinking a lot of French ships, I'm still sinking a lot of pre-war production tonnage, I'm still sinking uh, yeah, these numbers are good. What I'm hoping to see is a Yuki able to defend itself. On, you know, I, I suspect the AI is going to be crap and not be able to handle my my submarines, but we'll see. We'll see. So that's Air Navy, Norway, Denmark, France Army, Resistance. I think that sums it all up. Uh, I changed. I changed some productions. I've. Uh, activated basic bonds uh, which means for 270 days I get some factory production so economic no then I have to increase and increase I also appointed a no I did not I um, also oh this is interesting I actually ordered to increase my training standards of the German army from high standards to what else elite standards so my troops gonna have the best training in the world. They're gonna have more experience gain, they're gonna have better organization, but obviously you have to train them longer which uh, which costs more attrition in equipment. And also I'm paying 1% in consumer goods factories, but I think it's worth it to have the best trained army in the world. It's cool, if nothing else. So that's it for this summary and this time and the next video is going to be the actual invasion of at least Denmark, maybe also Norway, uh, and we'll play. Well, we'll see about how far we go. But next video is going to be a gameplay video where I actually uh, unpause and and play. So thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you in the next time, which will start in about five ten minutes because this is, I'm only pausing now to make different parts of the YouTube series in the future. See you soon.